For countries to spread prosperity to citizens, governments must find industries where they can compete globally in the digital age, the so-called fourth industrial revolution. These countries are seen as innovative with enterprising citizens. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the best countries for entrepreneurs. And just wait until you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video, something you would never even have thought of. So make sure you watch till the end. Now before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. Now let's cut to the chase. At 20, United Arab Emirates. The United Arab Emirates, or UAE, is a federation of seven emirates on the southeast end of the Arabian Peninsula. The country, wedged between Oman and Saudi Arabia, has rocky desert, wetlands, waterless mountains and coastlines that stretch along the Gulf of Oman and the Persian Gulf. The emirates that currently comprise the UAE were known as the Trucial States in the 19th century as a result of a series of agreements with Great Britain. In 1971, six of these states merged to form the UAE, a seventh joined in 1972. Prior to the discovery of oil in the mid-20th century, the UAE's economy was based primarily on fishing and a pearl industry. When oil exports began in the 1960s, the country's economy rapidly transformed. Today, the UAE's per capita gross domestic product is on par with those of leading Western European nations, according to the CIA's World Factbook. And the World Economic Forum has named the country the most competitive economy in the Arab world. While conservative at heart, the UAE is one of the Gulf's most liberal countries, with a constitution that allows for freedom of religion. The country is made up of a federation of monarchies, where the legal system is a mix of civil and Islamic law. Suffrage is limited, with only a few chosen citizens able to vote for the unicameral Federal Nation Council, and political parties are banned. The UAE is known for its two largest cities, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, which draws millions of tourists each year. Dubai, a regional business hub known for its sleek skyscrapers, is home to the largest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Abu Dhabi is the seat of the Federal National Council and serves as the national capital of the UAE. The UAE avoided the widespread unrest seen elsewhere in the Middle East during the Arab Spring, though in 2011, political activists and intellectuals called for greater public participation in governance. In response, the government launched infrastructure investment plans to help the poor and also crack down on those calling for reform. Rights groups have criticized the government for detaining, disappearing and sometimes torturing its challengers. The UAE is a member of the United Nations, OPEC, the World Trade Organization and several other international organizations. At 19, New Zealand. British and Polynesian influences course through picturesque New Zealand, an island nation in the Pacific Ocean southeast of Australia. Early Maori settlers ceded sovereignty to British invaders with the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840 and European settlers flooded in. Today, 70% of Kiwis, a common term for the people of New Zealand after a native flightless bird, are of European descent. A sense of pride has surged among the Maori, the country's first settlers, who now account for about 14%, as homeland grievances become more openly addressed. Though the British monarch remains head of state, New Zealand has operated under an independent parliamentary democracy led by a prime minister since its independence in 1907. In 2017, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern led the Progressive Labour Party to victory and became the youngest female leader in the world. The majority of New Zealand's population is concentrated in the North Island, with nearly one-third living in Auckland alone. But low density and scattered populations make for peaceful exploration of the nation's impressive mountains and pristine beaches of Lord of the Rings trilogy movie fame. New Zealand saw impressive growth and transformation in the decades following independence. The export market, abounding with dairy, sheep, beef, poultry, fruit, vegetables and wine was opened beyond the UK and manufacturing and tourism were expanded. Per capita income remains high and education expenditures as a percent of gross domestic product are some of the highest in the world. The Kiwi spirit and culture are personified by such notable natives as Sir Edmund Hillary who first climbed Mount Everest in 1953 and Lord Rutherford who split the atom. The bungee jump, Hamilton jet boat, referee's whistle and frozen meat are also credited to New Zealanders. Since 1980, New Zealand has been a nuclear-free zone. 
It is a leader in peacekeeping and global security and party to key international organizations, including the United Nations, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation and Pacific Islands Forum. At 18, it's Finland. Geography defines the history and culture of Nordic Finland, one of the most northern-reaching countries in the world. Bordered by Norway, Sweden, Russia, the Baltic Sea and the Gulf of Bothnia, Finland has its vast stretches of heavily forested open land acts as a northern gate between west and east. Finland is a bilingual country. Finnish and Swedish are both official languages. Sweden and Russia alternatively ruled Finland from the late 12th to early 20th centuries. The country declared independence following the Russian Revolution and in 2017 Finland celebrated 100 years of independence. Finnish culture played an essential role in establishing national identity. The Kelevala, a 19th century collection of poems compiled from folk songs, ballads, is viewed as helping solidify the Finnish spirit. Finland, which functions today as a parliamentary democracy, is an international leader in providing education and it ranks high for its performances in civil rights, press freedom and quality of life. The country was one of the first in the world to grant women the right to vote and was the first country to legalise universal suffrage, the right to both vote and run for office. The country's economy is primarily geared toward free market capitalism that, like its Nordic neighbours, diverts substantial spending to social safety nets and public services. Historically, the country's workforce has been tied to the land. However, following World War II, the country moved to rapidly industrialise. Today, Finland's economy reflects its engagement with the world community. One third of the country's GDP comes from international trade. In recent years, however, a downturn in demand for its exports caused a recession that it is just emerging from. The country has faced other challenges, notably an aging population and the question of how to maintain its welfare state model. Finland is a member of major international organizations such as the United Nations, World Bank and European Union, as well as regional organizations such as the Nordic Council. Next up at 17, it's Belgium. The Kingdom of Belgium is a small, highly developed and urbanized country in Western Europe, bordered by the Netherlands, Germany, Luxembourg, France and the North Sea. The nation is known for beer, chocolate and castles and features Dutch, French and German as official languages. The country earned the nickname the Battlefield of Europe for being a battleground for historic conflicts between larger powers, including the Battle of Waterloo in the 19th century and the two world wars in the 20th century. Belgium is one of six countries that founded the European Union and one of the founding members of the Eurozone, the World Trade Organization, NATO and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It hosts NATO, the European Council and many other international organizations. Belgium is a constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary system of government. The land is divided into three autonomous regions. Flanders, the Dutch-speaking peoples of the more economically developed north who comprise a majority of the population. Wallonia, the French-speaking southern provinces and the Brussels capital region in the middle. According to the 2021 Best Countries report, Belgians are seen as caring about the environment and human rights, ranking 13th and 11th respectively in those categories. One of Europe's first countries to undergo the Industrial Revolution, Belgium's economy today is highly modernized, service-oriented and closely connected to the world. The country is a major importer and exporter of heavy machinery and foodstuffs. The city of Antwerp is considered the world's diamond capital since the country is the world's leading importer of raw diamonds, exporting the finished jewels to countries around the globe. Belgium is by far the world's leading manufacturer of billiard balls. Belgium is considered a high-income country and reports a comparatively high quality of life for its citizens as well as high levels of health care. It is viewed as providing comparatively quality education. Over the centuries, major artistic movements started from the region of modern-day Belgium, including the Flemish Renaissance and later Expressionist and Surrealistic painting. In architecture, Belgium experienced Romanesque, Gothic and Baroque movements. Adolphe Ketelet is credited with inventing the body mass index of all things, and fellow Belgium and instrument maker Adolphe Sax invented, yes, the saxophone. 
Belgium is also the birthplace of the late actress Audrey Hepburn, late fashion designer Liz Claiborne, and the musician, singer and songwriter Paul Van Haver, better known by his stage name of Strome. The country has been home to notable exiles, including Karl Marx, who wrote The Communist Manifesto, and the French writer Victor Hugo, who wrote Les Miserables, while living in Brussels in 1851. Now at 16, Austria. Austria is a culturally rich, high-income parliamentary democracy that hosts several key international organizations. Located in the heart of Central Europe, the modern Austrian state was shaped by the two world wars of the 20th century. Austria's small size today belies its past as a European power that lasted for centuries under the rule of the Habsburg dynasty. That era ended following the Austro-Hungarian Empire's defeat in World War I, Austria then established itself as a republic, which ended in 1938 when it was annexed by Nazi Germany. Following Germany's World War II defeat, Austria eventually re-established itself as an independent republic, pledging in a Cold War-era treaty to maintain neutrality on the global stage. The nation has a rich tradition of being a continental, cultural centre. Vienna, the nation's capital, became Europe's centre for classical music innovation. Famous composers such as Franz Schubert and Johann Strauss were born in Vienna, and both Ludwig van Beethoven and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart spent much of their lives in the city. Austria boasts one of the highest standards of living among the economies of the world, ranking highly in per capita gross domestic product. Its economy is tied closely to Germany, its main trading partner. The nation's top economic sectors are services, industry and agriculture. Austria is a major tourist destination, helped largely by the Alps mountain range to the west and south. Legislative elections in recent years have pushed conservative parties into a share of power, mirroring a growing mood across Europe, where nationalism, mixed with anti-immigration populism, increasingly challenged the European Union's commitment to open borders. Austria today is a member of international and regional organizations such as the United Nations, World Trade Organization and European Union. Additionally, the country is host to several key international groups, including the International Atomic Energy Agency, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, and the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe. And now at 15, it's Norway. The Kingdom of Norway is the westernmost country in the Scandinavian peninsula, made up mostly of mountainous terrain. Nearly all of its population lives in the south, surrounding the capital, Oslo. Norway's coastline is made up of thousands of miles of fjords, bays and island shores. The Norwegians developed a maritime culture and were active throughout the Viking era, establishing settlements in Iceland and Greenland. For many years, Norway's fate was tied to Denmark and Sweden. In 1905, Norway gained independence from Sweden through a referendum. The country was neutral during both world wars, but was nonetheless occupied by Nazi Germany for five years. Norway is a high-income nation with a vibrant private sector and a substantial safety net. Discovery of oil and gas off the coast in the 1960s gave the country an economic boost, and today Norway is one of the world's leading petroleum exporters. Norway's roughly five million people live in a constitutional monarchy. The Prime Minister, the head of government, is nominally chosen by the monarch with the approval of the legislature. About 80% of the people are Evangelical Lutheran, according to the CIA World Factbook. Higher education is mostly free. Long an isolated country on the outskirts of Europe, Norway has maintained many of its storytelling and folklore customs. The country developed a rich literary tradition after splitting from Denmark in the 19th century and is now among the world leaders in books published per capita. About 40,000 Samai people maintain a distinct culture in the north of the country where they herd reindeer. Skiing and skating are national pastimes. Like many countries in Europe, Norway struggles with how to integrate refugees and ethnic minorities. Other challenges include how to preserve the country's robust social safety net with an aging population and how to continue to be economically competitive as global oil prices fall. In 1949, Norway abandoned neutrality and became a member of NATO. The country is not a member of the European Union, rejecting membership in both 1972 and 1994. And next up at 14, it's France. 
The influence France has on the world, both in the past and today, is difficult to overstate. Located in Western Europe, France is one of the world's oldest countries, and its reach extends around the globe through science, politics, economics and perhaps above all, culture. Starting in the Middle Ages, France evolved through kingdom, empire and finally into a republic. It was one of the first nations to champion the rights of the individual. France today is a democracy with a separation of power falling between executive, legislative and judicial branches of government. The World Bank classifies France as a wealthy, high-income nation. French citizens look to the federal government to guarantee certain social services such as education, healthcare and pensions for retirement. The French economy is one of the world's largest and is a mixture of private enterprise and government involvement. Tourism is a major contributor to the economy. France generally tops lists of most visited countries. Other major economic sectors include industry, agriculture, energy and defence. The country is one of the world's top exporters of weapons. The French people have traditionally been a mix of Celtic, Germanic and Latin ethnicities. Waves of immigration in the 20th and 21st centuries, however, are altering the country's population. Immigrants typically come from Northern Africa and other parts of Europe. France faces various domestic challenges, most notably how it confronts terrorism in the wake of the November 2015 attacks in Paris that claimed 130 lives and a deadly attack on a satirical newspaper earlier that year. Polls had shown public attitudes toward Islam and immigrants worsening and in April 2017, voters chose an outsider candidate, Emmanuel Macron, as their new president. The country also faces slowed economic growth and growing unemployment. Joblessness is especially hitting the country's youth and young adults and the government has launched an effort to reform the labour market to help tackle high unemployment. France has a rich cultural heritage. French literature began in the Middle Ages and the country has a long history in fine arts, music and dance. Cinema occupies an important place in the country's cultural life. French cuisine is popular around the world, as is the wine produced in the country. France is a founding member of the United Nations and has a permanent seat on its Security Council. Other major groups it belongs to include the European Union, World Trade Organization, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and NATO. And now at 13, Denmark. The Kingdom of Denmark emerged in the 10th century and includes two North Atlantic island nations, the Faroe Islands and Greenland. Along with Sweden and Norway, it forms Scandinavia, a cultural region in Northern Europe. Copenhagen, Denmark's capital, is home to notable institutions such as the Copenhagen Stock Exchange. The capital also serves as a hub connecting Northern Europe with the rest of the world, with the largest international airport in Scandinavia, an active port, a subway system and the Oresund Bridge connecting the city to Malmö, Sweden. Since 1849, Denmark has operated under a constitutional monarchy. Queen Magrath II is the current ceremonial head of state and Lars Lok Rasmussen is prime minister. The Folketing is Denmark's supreme legislative body. Its members are elected by the Danish people. The Danish government is perceived as highly stable and very transparent. Through progressive taxation, Denmark employs a universal health care system in which citizens receive mostly free medical care. Higher education is also free. Unsurprisingly, Denmark's highly progressive government and societal structure creates incredible social mobility. Denmark has several leading industries including food processing, tourism and the production of iron, steel and machinery. Its main exports are processed foods, agricultural and industrial machinery, pharmaceuticals and furniture. Denmark's economy is based on the flex security model which combines a flexible labour market with a policy for the unemployed. This flex security model allows for businesses to establish inexpensively and quickly as there is scarce government oversight regarding matters such as terminations or work hours. The Danish corporate tax rate is 24.5% but its income tax rate is among the highest in the world. A founding member of NATO, Denmark is a member of many other international organisations including the European Union, United Nations, the Nordic Council, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. And now at 12, it's Australia. The Commonwealth of Australia occupies the Australian continent. 
The country also includes some islands, most notably Tasmania. Indigenous people occupied the land for at least 40,000 years before the first British settlements of the 18th century. Australia has a parliamentary democracy government similar to the United Kingdom. While it separates its federal government into three arms, parliament, executive and judiciary, the executive answers to the parliament. In 1986, the nation ended all constitutional ties to the United Kingdom, although Queen Elizabeth II remains the ceremonial head of state. Since the late 18th century, Australia has been influenced by British, Celtic and US culture. In recent decades, however, immigration from non-English speaking nations, primarily from Asia, has altered the nation's demographic profile and influenced its popular culture. Australia is considered a wealthy nation with a market-based economy that has a comparatively high gross domestic product and per capita income. Its economy is driven by the service sector and the export of commodities. The nation has a high rate of participation in sporting activities and boasts a comparatively high life expectancy for both females and males. Its major cities routinely score well in global livability surveys. Late in 2017, voters overwhelmingly supported legalising same-sex marriage, sending the issue to federal lawmakers. Australians remain particularly concerned about environmental issues, according to survey and government data. The country has ratified the Kyoto Protocol, the United Nations treaty that calls on nations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Nevertheless, carbon dioxide emissions per capita are comparatively high among nations. Australia is a member of major international and regional organisations, including the United Nations, the Group of 20, the World Trade Organisation, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Commonwealth of Nations and Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. At 11, the Netherlands. Situated along the fringes of Western Europe, the Netherlands is a coastal lowland freckled with windmills characteristic of its development around the water. Three major European rivers, the Rhine, Meuse and Schelde, run through neighbours Germany and Belgium into the nation's busy ports. The Kingdom of the Netherlands emerged in 1815 after years of Spanish and later French occupation. In 2010, a collection of island territories in the Caribbean known as the Dutch Antilles were disbanded, but Aruba, Curacao and Sint Maarten remain constituent countries within the kingdom. Known as Dutch, the people of the Netherlands have formed what has long been considered a tolerant society, though some politicians are increasingly voicing concerns over immigration. In 2001, the country became the first to legalise same-sex marriage and national stances on drugs, prostitution, euthanasia and abortion are liberal. The country also boasts the highest concentration of museums in the world. It was the birthplace of Rembrandt and Van Gogh, as well as the microscope, telescope and thermometer. More than 1,000 bridges and 20,000 miles of bike paths connect the densely populated nation, with most citizens concentrated in a grouping of cities along the coast known as the Randstad. Much of the country is underwater, and the 60 million people that touch down in capital city Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport each year land more than a dozen feet below sea level. The seat of the government is located about 40 miles southwest of The Hague. The Dutch operate under constitutional monarchy with an elected parliament. Known for its tulips, this high-income developed nation is one of the world's leading exporters of agriculture, an industry that has become mostly mechanised. An open market policy and prime transportation location help the Netherlands maintain a trade surplus, but the economy continues to recover from an expensive stimulus programme designed to help it bounce back after the economic downturn in 2009. The Netherlands is active in United Nations peacekeeping efforts and headquarters the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court in The Hague. It was a founding member of NATO and the modern-day European Union, of which it has been quite vocally supportive. And there you have the most entrepreneurial countries in the world counted down from 20 to 10. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. We'll see you next time and possibly in the video counting down from 10 to 1.